because the last day of class, we have a lot to cover. Let's keep let's keep the tears for the end. And for now, actually, do what we're here to do, and that's learn some freaking math. So let's do it. Who's excited? Liam, I feel like Liam, that's that that frowny face came in kind of late. I couldn't tell if you were frowning over the fact it's the last day of class or frowning over the fact we're actually starting math. I'm gonna assume it's the first one. And we're gonna get going here because today we actually have a really fun class because we're actually gonna define what the heck a function is. Maybe, oh, remember, oh, this is fun. Remember this? This has happened in a while. This is back. There we go. Um, get that pencil later. Um, the point is, they're actually gonna talk about what a function is beyond like, the middle school definition. And it actually is kind of deep and really awesome. So let's start talking about it. First things first, we're talking about functions. And I'm gonna go kind of fast today because we have a lot to cover. So please stop me if you guys have any questions and uh, feel free to email me if you want to go over any of this in more detail so we can talk later. But the point is we're talking about functions. Specifically, we're doing um, 7.1 slash 7.2, and we're going to dip our toes into 7.4 today. So let's go back over what the middle school definition of a function was. And um, the middle school definition of function is a function is a thing, right? Like, what's the thing? Like, but anyway, it's a thing that takes in inputs from a domain and spits out outputs in a co-domain. At the basic level, that's what a function does, and that's what they told you it does in middle school. At least they told me that in middle school. I have no idea what the kids these days are learning or whatever Common Core. But anyway, the point is um, an example of this would be the function that goes from the, the interval 0, 5, doesn't include 0, but does include 5, and spits out things into the real numbers. By the way, I should mention, I didn't mention this last time, this arrow right here has absolutely nothing to do with like the if p then q arrow. Arrows are usually like five different things in math. One of them is the whole if p then q, the implication arrow. Another one is the limit arrow. We say like the limit uh, x goes to zero of like whatever, right? That's another arrow, arrow and this is a third arrow. Um, we like arrows a lot in math because it's all about ideas moving around. But the point is, this is a totally different arrow, so don't get confused there. So let's define a function that takes an input from zero to five, outputs things to the real numbers, and specifically it's the function such that f of x equals one over x squared. A pretty nice function right there. Now, last time we talked about what it means for a function to be well-defined. We said functions must be well-defined to even be functions. And I guess the weird question is that they're not well-defined. Well, what are they? They're just things, I guess. We'll get to that in a second. But the point is a function has to be well-defined. And I'll say recall A function is well-defined if for each input we have exactly one output. And exactly one output, it kind of means two things, right? In a certain sense, exactly one means you can't be zero and you can't be two or more. <laughs> I guess that would be a weird way to think about it in real life. For example, if I say that I only have one nose, you don't go, well, why don't you just say you have, don't have zero nose and you also don't have two or more nose? This makes no sense. It's just better to say one nose. But in a certain sense, our functions actually makes us think about it this way. A function is well-defined if for each input we have exactly one output. 
and, the, and, and one output meaning not zero and not two or more. And the reason we care about that is because it's kind of easier to prove it doesn't have zero outputs and it doesn't have two or more than it is to prove it has exactly one. It's an interesting thing. But anyway, the point is that's what it means to be well defined. Each bin has exactly one output. And is that true here? Um, yes, it is true. We'll say note f is well defined since for every x in our domain, the important part is for every x in our domain, 1 over x squared is defined and has one value. So that's why it's well defined, because 1 over x squared is defined, meaning it's not 0, and it has one value, meaning it's not more than, more than 1. And this might seem obvious, but let's do some examples where this wouldn't be so obvious. We had a different example if we had a very similar function f that went from 0, 5, by including 0 this time, to r by f of x equals 1 over x squared, would this function be defined, well defined? Well, let's start here. We just said that any x in 0, 5 is defined, it has one value. So if it's not well defined, it must not, it must fail at the additional element we added, which was 0. And what's the problem with 0 being in the domain here? Can't divide by 0. Can't divide by 0. Note. F here is not, good job, Herman, well defined. I forgot to praise you correctly. Good job. This is, <laughs> is now well defined since um, for zero, which we should know is in our domain, F of zero, which equals one over zero squared, which equals one over zero is not defined. So it's not true. So, so it's not true that for each input we have an output because you plug in zero, there's literally is no output. This function is undefined, right? This is literally, we're going down to like definitions of defined and undefined. Defined means it has a value, undefined means it does not have a value. One over zero just does not have a value. It's undefined. And we can think of wacky examples that we talked about last time where you can actually get more than one answer for each function if you get more than one answer for each function if you don't define it correctly. For example, what if we define a function g and we define g and we'll say this goes from the real numbers to the real numbers. No, I want this to go from the positive real numbers, including zero, to the real numbers, by, I want g of x to equal the y, such that y squared x equals y squared. It was like a stupid thing to do, but this is a totally fine relation. Oh. I gave it away. This is a totally fine thing to talk about here. And that is, I want to plug in for any g, I want to output the y such that x equals y squared. But what's the problem with that? This is not well defined, not because it doesn't have, not because it's not because any element doesn't have an answer. Every element has an answer here, actually. For any g, for any x in the domain, zero to infinity, I'll say note. For any x in our domain 0 to infinity, 
Um, the square root of x is such that x equals the square root of x squared. So y equals the square root of x is an output of g of x. So every single x or domain has an output. The problem is it has more than one. However, we're, we're going to run to the glare. We're going to go below the glare. However, y equals negative square root of x is also such that x equals y squared. So negative square root of x is another output of g. Hence, there are elements in g there are elements in our domain, zero infinity, with more than one output. So G is not well defined. Oh, you can see that. And this is a weird situation here, but this is, this is totally a function. It's totally a thing. That would not be well defined. So G is not a function. You need to be well defined to be a function. Any questions? Good. And now notice that this definition kind of feels backwards here, but that's not the re. And I understand why you might feel that way if you've ever seen something like this before. But that's actually not the reason why this is not well defined. If we change this x to a y cube, so we want g of x to output the y such that x equals y cubed for any x you plug in. And so for example, g of 8, you go, um, hmm, look at 8 and you go, okay, what can I cube to get 8? Oh, that'd be 2. So that, that's how this function is defined. It'll work like that. This function is well defined. Because anything on our input, anything in our domain has a single value output. Yeah. So anyway, the point is a function like this is a valid function. It's just the one with the square doesn't work because um, there's multiple things that square the same value. Where cubes, there's not multiple things that cube the same value, so we're good. Anyway.